Good morning, everybody. Michelle and I just want to say hello to you. We continue to long for the time that we can get together again. But in the meantime, this morning, I want to encourage all of us to continually stick our heads into heaven. It's just a phrase to remind us, because when we do, we continue to get God's perspective. Our thinking starts to change. We see things differently. We hear eternal things. We begin to think differently. Because often at time we can rely on our Sunday meetings just to stay connected to God. And with that not happening, it's just a real encouragement. Continually stick your head into heaven. In Psalm 105 and Psalm 103, it's the journey of the Israelites out of captivity into the promised land. 105 is about God's faithfulness to his promises and his oath that he made to Abram, Isaac and Jacob. 106 is the other side of the same coin, is the Israelites' response. And unfortunately, we're going to read now, they didn't respond very well at times, but there's a reason why. God still fulfilled his promise and his purpose because of his faith and grace and he's incredibly faithful. So 106 is where we're going to read from. Verse 10, it says, He saved them from the land of the foe, from the hand of the enemy. He redeemed them. The waters covered over the adversaries, talking about the Egyptians. Not one of them survived. Then they believed his promises and sang his praise. If it ended there, it would be great. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Verse 13 says, but, and as I've always said before, what comes after the but is what we live in. What comes before the but falls away. But they soon forgot what he had done. The Israelites soon forgot what God had done for them. They did not wait on his counsel. They started to look elsewhere for counsel. They started to think, with, they started to decide themselves how things should be and what it should look like, unfortunately. Verse 14 says, In the desert they gave in to their cravings. And so when they forgot what God had done, seeking their own counsel, what happens is their appetites begin to change. Their appetites for the world and the way the world was doing things began to change. Then it says in verse 16, In the camp they grew envious of Moses and of Aaron. So comparison started to set in. They compared what they didn't have to what they had before, and they compared one to another, unfortunately. Then in verse 19, it says, At Horeb they made a calf and worshipped an idol cast from metal. So you can see they started to worship other gods that their hands had made. And that's what begins to happen, unfortunately, when we forget what is done in here. We begin to look to our own means. Verse 20 says, they exchanged their glory for an image of a bull which eats grass. So they gave up the eternal aspect of things for the temple. The temple became more important than the eternal because they gave up their glory. Then verse 21 says, they forgot the God who saved them, who had done great things in Egypt. So they didn't only forget what he had done, now they forgot who he was. So it's a real downward spiral, unfortunately. Then in verse 24, it says this. Then they despised the pleasant land, and they did not believe in his promises. They despised the manna. We can read that. They despised the promises of God. Uh, that's very sad, unfortunately, but that's what began to happen. And sometimes what God wants to bless us with, uh, we can begin to despise when we lose his perspective. Verse 25 says they grumbled in their tents and did not obey the Lord. It's in their tents, so they grumbled at home, and that began to set the atmosphere in their home, just the grumbling and the moaning. And then verse 28a says, they yoked themselves to the ball of poor. In other words, they yoked themselves to the idols of the nations. In other words, emotionally and from their heart, they started to give over to those particular idols. And then as a result of that, verse 34 says, they did not destroy the peoples as the Lord had commanded to them, but they mingled with the nations and adopted their customs because they started to yoke themselves with them. They worshiped, verse 36, they worshiped their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. 
It's amazing the progression downward, what happened, just because they forgot what God had done and they forgot who he was. And you can carry on reading how it went. But in verse 44, there's another but. It says, but he took note of their distress, God, and he heard their cry, and for their sake he remembered his covenant, and out of his great love he relented. In other words, he had grace and mercy upon them. So they did eventually walk into the promises, but they went through a lot to get there. So what I want to encourage you to do is never forget what God has done. Never forget who he is. Psalm 103 says this, and I'm nearly finished. Psalm 103, we all know Psalm 103. Praise the Lord on my soul and all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord on my soul and forget not his benefits. Who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, redeems your life from the pit, crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies you with your desires, with good things. So be safe, continually stick your head in heaven. And one more thing, I encourage you to get hold of a book by A.W. Tozer called The Knowledge of the Holy. Blessings to all. Continue to stick your head into heaven. Amen.